Alternative Guide to the Universe is an exhibition about people who reinvent the world we live in, some aspect of it. They might be reinventing the way we think about buildings, the way we think about cities and what future they have. They might be thinking of alternative inventions, alternative sources of energy, alternative sources of healing. They may be thinking about ways to liberate the alphabet or to create alternative visions of how subatomic particles are composed. I don't like to use the word outsider because outside what? Actually, these people are very inside their own imaginations. I think of them more as mavericks in the sense that they're highly independent, their thinking is outside of the norm, they define our conventions and our rules for doing things, but their work is highly sophisticated. When you walk into the exhibition, there's an area that deals with numbers and dates and alternative time systems. The next section, which is the most expansive section, deals with architecture, whether it's Bodhis Isaac Kinglis from Kinshasa in the Congo, who imagines a city for the third millennium where the buildings are so colorful and so playful, there won't be need for a police force or an army. Architecture will win the day. There's Richard Greaves from Canada who makes buildings in the woods that don't use nails. They're held together by string. We then have several artists who deal with healing technologies. I'm standing inside of Emery Blagden's a fraction of his healing machine, which once filled a barn in Nebraska. Guo Feng Yi from China makes drawings that she calls painted prescriptions which trap energy systems in the body. We also have a group of photographers, all of whom document invented selves. We have a technology section, which really looks at everything from flying machines to typewriters for the 27th century. We have work that deals with language, uh, Ram El Z, the legendary New York graffiti artist had an amazing theory that the letters of the Roman alphabet had to be liberated from their forms, they had to be mobilized and armed in order to fight the corruption of this decadent culture. We also have the wonderful robotics maker Wu Yu Lu, who's a Chinese farmer, who since he was eight years old has been making different kinds of robots. We have robots that climb walls and a child robot. And then the final room brings together two people from the West Coast of the United States, Philip Blackmore and James Carter, who are what's called fringe physicists. Their theories are outside of anything the scientific establishment is proposing. One of the most exciting living artists in this show is George Widener, who is a calendar savant. And George makes drawings of future cities that he calls megalopolises, which are constructed around different types of dates. He does different kinds of calendars which mix up the dates of different historical events and aims a lot of his work for a future audience of intelligent robots. I, I see these relationships of these dates in my dreams and such where they, they have these symmetrical properties and then I create the um, cityscape or landscape based upon that. And um, it's for uh, future machines but you don't have to be a you don't have to be a robot to enjoy them, you know? <laughs> Paul Lafley has been described as a visionary artist, and he can layer images and words together in ways that even if you can't follow what he's talking about exactly, you can see that here is someone who's trying to tie all these different threads together in a new way. Many people criticize me and say I should be a writer. And I said, if I just wrote this, it, you wouldn't know about me because I never get published. And, and so that I wanted something that people couldn't avoid. I want to do all this stuff. You know, <laughs> in other words, I want to show that it's real and I, and I want my name attached to it and uh, people will know that, that I invented that. I like the concept of invention because that's 
something that has a neutrality about it, which doesn't have the, the pomposity that, uh, that art does. And it's very much my hope that anyone coming to this show will be inspired by this kind of thinking and will feel that they can leave and let their own imaginations off the leash a little bit, explore ideas that they have, realize that there's a lot of value in that kind of imagination, regardless of whether you come up with a scientific breakthrough or not. You may come up with something that is a beautiful object.